Hi there everybody and welcome to another video here at Daring Beefcake. I have this BMW E90. This is a 2009 model and I uh, just happened to have a problem with the ABS um, or really the uh, traction control. So the, the little button that says DT, DTC. Um, so I'm just gonna show you the fault that I'm having at the moment and the fault is, is saying um, there's something wrong with the pressure sensors. So let me show you what is going on here. Right, so these are the two lights that are on. Um, and if I do a check, obviously, uh, of the, if I do a check of the car, that comes up. So it's the same thing as that. It's just a warning triangle, which refers to the um, that system that is the... Um, you call it DTC or it's also known as DSC which is uh, within the ABS um, ECU so the fault code that I'm getting it's this one here so DSC hydraulic unit pressure sensor internal um, I have had this kind of issue before um, and if I look at the, the data stream here and look at the pressure sensors, so we can select all of these. Such a strong reflection there. Right, select all and just check all. I basically have, I'm not applying the brake at the moment. All of these are zero. And pressure on the brake pedal it's saying minus 20 bar. So if I press the brake, I have no, no readings there at all. So that is a bit strange. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong or, or it is to do with the, um, the pressure sensor within the actual unit is just not functioning and therefore is not sending any readings. Um, obviously the car is working and it stops, but um, when you drive the car with a fault like that, usually um, the ABS is not functioning. So the ABS gets cut out and you just drive with a sort of basic normal system where you press the brake and you're pushing onto the uh, the brake fluid, which then applies the the, the brake, the brakes to the each wheel. Um, so I am going to tackle this issue. Hopefully, I'm, I'm just going to compare these readings with another. I have another BMW here, which has uh, uh, which is the same as this one. So I just want to see if we get any readings on that car, and then. From that point, it will be a matter of removing the ABS unit. So basically what we need to do is remove the ABS unit uh, with the pump and send it off for uh, repair or they actually, well, they check it and they repair it. The other option is to buy a used uh, pump and actually program it to the car. So technically with the machine that I've got here, the uh, OBD, computer I should be able to program it um, to program a new one well it's not new but it's second hand however um, by sending it to this uh, specialist to check the unit I also can confirm that the unit was faulty so that way we sort of um, save a bit of time really um, money wise is obviously a bit more expensive to have your unit uh, repaired but if there's nothing wrong with it, then also you get it back and then you need to look elsewhere where the pro this problem might be. So in some cars, uh, not BMWs, the these pressure sensors for the, for the wheels are actually um, outside of the unit. So I think I experienced this similar issue on the Volvo and the pressure sensor was actually um, in the, in the, um, brake in the brake lining in the brake pipeline so you could replace it um, that way but anyway so 
let's get on with this i'm gonna go and check the other car i'll show you the figures and then we'll have to remove the the unit in any case <laughs> right here i am on the other car so let's just check the pressure sensors and stuff like that in this car see what we got so we can see here the um pressure from the brake pedal it's reading more or less at zero the other one is is reading at minus 20 and so that is already an indication this car doesn't have any any phones at the moment <laughs> so um so i'm relying a little bit on the data from here and if i press the brake okay so this is what i wanted to clarify if there would be any readings here there's no readings to to these values here however to the um, brake pedal here when you press it if i press it mildly if i press it harder and harder and harder all the way in it goes up to 130 bar so with that information i can i can be a bit more confident to know that i have an issue uh, with the actual unit and, and it's not a cable or anything like that that is, is messing around so now i can confidently go and remove the unit and send it for repair so that will be um, the next task so removing this unit can be a little bit of um, a fiddle to be honest um, but i'll try to i'll try to film it however it's, it's a very fiddly job even when when fitting the unit back you really need to be careful not to damage the threads on on the actual um well on the brake lines and on the actual uh, abs unit because if you do uh, then that is a whole issue so it's, it's another huge problem because then you would have to remake brake lines or change the brake lines and whatnot and that can be a huge job so if you're gonna tackle something like this it's certainly definitely at your own risk uh, but uh, but just be always be careful um, so let's have a look at that unit okay let's go ahead and remove this um, ABS unit um, so obviously this video will only exist if I am successful in solving this problem <laughs> so um, Right, if you open your bonnet and you go to the uh, left here, you have this cover. You need to lift these little clips on the sides. There's one there and one here. And also you need to move this little rubber out of the way because it's gonna be hooked on that. And then you can get this little cover out, plastic cover. And that's where our ABS unit is. Uh, the pump and the main problem with all of these is that when you try to get this out um, these lines are on the way and sometimes you have to slightly bend them which is what we want to avoid the most because when you bend them you sort of get them out of the of the the, the, the position that they're they're fitting and when you when you come to refit this um, then you struggle refitting them but um, is the only way to get this out so there are three 10 mils i'm just going to show you where they are this there's a 10 mil bolt there there will be another 10 mil just underneath this connection on the just on the side i'll be able to see it just there actually and then there's another one just down there so we need to remove those three 10 mil nuts in order to get the pump out but first i'm going to undo all of these and uh, brake fluid will leak so um, there's not much we can do about it but afterwards you can wash the area with water because that brake fluid can be a bit corrosive so I'll just get on with it but that's basically what we need to do I've got a spanner here which is um, it's an 11 mil spanner and I also have a 10 mil 
little ratchet here for the 10 mil uh, nuts. Uh, you may want to have a magnet because once you undo these nuts, you need to pick them from down there. You don't want them to fall. So, well, if they did fall, I think you could catch them. I not, don't remember if there's a hole down there or not, but you usually I try to avoid uh, dropping them because they seem to go missing forever. So, so anyway, let's start undoing these uh, 11 mil nuts. Okay, so now this is coming out, but maybe you can see what I mean by the difficulty of removing this from there. It's all these little pipes are just holding the whole thing in, in place. A pain in the neck, to be honest. So, right, it's taking me, looks like about 10 minutes to remove it. And you can see, maybe you can see there's brake fluid dropping down there. So there isn't much I can do about that. Maybe I can put a bit of paper, but I'm going to rinse the area anyway uh, with some water. Uh, but now we have our unit out. We can just, now what we need to is to do is send it off, send it off to get it repaired. So um, the other, as I was saying, the other option is to, basically if you get the same if you found the same part number sometimes it works 
sometimes you fit it and it works straight uh, but it's, it is hard to find sometimes the exact same part number which means you can buy one that is not the same part number the same unit but then it needs to be programmed and for that you need to use uh, obviously software and if you haven't got the software to program this into the car then it's not going to uh, to work so the reason I'm sending it off instead of getting another one and programming it it's because uh, that way I also have a guarantee that this unit is actually uh, faulty and when it gets repaired it actually gets repaired to a good standard it's guaranteed I think for life so you're not gonna have the same issue with this whereas if you put a second hand one it might have the same problem in future now if somebody knows a better way of removing this then do let me know by all means um, I like to learn as well from others and make my life a little bit easier so now I'm going to pack this I'm going to literally box it put it in a box and I'm gonna send it to a company the company we use is called AC Tronics and they will check it and fix it if necessary um, now this particular company will only accept uh, units from garages from a VAT business garage so if you're not obviously if you're a private individual um, you may need to get um, your local garage to send this off for you um, or there are other companies that I don't think require uh, for you to be VAT registered or have a business um, I think I used um, there is another company called right I don't remember right now but all you have to do is type on Google um, ECU ABS ECU repair and different companies will come up so AC Tronics will come up that's one of them we obviously we use them quite often and so obviously we trust their work and whatnot but I have used other companies before and I and they have been just as reliable so um, so by all means if you're a personal individual trying to fix your unit uh, get it fixed or get it checked then you might need to use a different company so I'm gonna pack it and send it off and well continue the video once this is back right I got my ABS pump uh, unit back from AC Tronics and apparently well they did detect the fault which means um, now it should be it should be fine uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and refit this refit it back to the car um, it's gonna be a fiddle of course it's not gonna be straightforward so you get some instructions here um, about once you refit this it says before mounting the battery must be disconnected calibrating the pressure sensor with diagnostics equipment restore basic settings is required if the fault codes cannot be cleared after installation you should be able to clear fault codes after this step but uh, it might be that it, as soon as you plug this in, all the fault codes, we will be able to clear them. Uh, the fault codes need to be deleted after the unit is mounted back to the vehicle. The brake need to be bled in the right order. Rear right, rear left, front right, front left. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and fit the unit back. I don't think I need to film this is just uh, refitting this is the reversal of removal basically um, you may notice that they put these little caps on each of the lines you need to remove these little caps and remove these two before you fit this inside of the the hole where it came from uh, because otherwise it'll be really hard to remove these two afterwards 
Uh, these four you can leave them on for now, you can remove them afterwards. Um, so if you were able to remove these from your car, then uh, the refitting process is very much very similar. It will take you a while, take your time, patience is key, and get your three bolts in there. And then we're going to plug the device in uh, with the battery, so disconnect the battery before you plug this back in and then reconnect your battery and then we're gonna have a look I'm gonna plug in the OBD uh, obviously we have to bleed this so we'll have a look at that slowly slowly progressing I managed to get those two well I managed to get the unit in <laughs> which is the most important and um, I screw these by the way by hand always I do it this by hand make sure they're going in the correct direction because sometimes when you remove these and when you bend this a little bit they don't line up properly and if you put this in a little bit and it gets stuck and you force it with your um, spanner then you're gonna damage it so always make sure that they go in and you put them in by hand still have to uh, also put the 10 mil nuts if you put a bit of paper in between your tool and the, the socket and the, the nut then uh, it's one way of holding it without dropping Because if you drop it in there, then you have to remove the whole thing. Again. So, just a bit of paper down there. And I'm gonna do the same for this one here. I've done the same for that one. Okay, I removed the little covers. And as you can see, these have to go in there. Again, make sure to screw them in by hand. If they go in properly, they will screw in by hand. Now you can see this one, for example, I had to bend it a bit, so it's not quite lining up. Also this one, again, same. So some of them may be a little bit of a struggle to put in, but uh, if it goes hard, it means it's not... Sometimes you can wiggle this a little bit in order to see if it's actually going in the right direction. And you will see that you can put them in by, by, by hand with your fingers. And again, if you can't put them in with your fingers, do not use the wrench. It will, it will damage it. So now I need my two hands because this one, for example, be going in actually but uh, as I say if it doesn't go in don't force it and wiggle, wiggle the pipe a little bit try to line it up make sure it's going in the correct direction the last thing you want to do is have your nicely repaired ABS pump and damage it yourself and you can also actually before I fit this one, maybe I should plug this in. I don't think it's a problem. Might be a problem.
before you put that one in plug your unit otherwise that's gonna be on the way <laughs> unless you can well it's not in so okay there we are let's connect it plug that in there you again you want to be careful with this plug because you don't want to damage the pins inside of here You have to push it in there, make sure it's sitting in properly. And then lock it into place. Right, now that is going in nicely. So I'm gonna do the same with all four of them. I'm gonna put some brake fluid in here and uh, then we can connect the battery. And I'm gonna show you how usually this problem goes away straight away. Even, you don't even need to bleed the, the system, but obviously we have to put some, I mean, you have to bleed the system, but what I mean is the fault will disappear as soon as you plug it in because this is going to detect that there's no issues with the sensor anymore. Time to top up. I'm using dot four. When you press the brake, obviously it will go all the way in. Um, another one thing to notice as well is that these uh, these nuts they don't screw all the way in. By the way, you can see how almost on this one a little bit is out. Same on this one. Not so much on this one, but the other ones there. So don't think that goes all the way in. This is the one I'm using, by the way. Brake and clutch fluid dot four synthetic. Right, I'm just inside the car. So before I reconnect the battery or do anything else, I'm just gonna pump the brake a few times. It's going to feel very spongy because we need to bleed it. But um, just wanna make sure I top up the fluid for now uh, to the to the max okay gonna put that back in there close this so this didn't really move down after I pumped a bit um, which is okay it's going to move down once we start bleeding the brakes from well starting from the back but now I'm going to reconnect the battery and then we can see um, what's happened to that fault. Let's go to the car. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna put the ignition on.
can see all the faults are gone straight away. That's what I meant. So now we still need to pump the brakes and I still need to delete all the fault calls from the computer. But the car now detects there is no faults on the on the pressure sensors. So no faults are present. Okay, so I just got all the wheels off and um, I've already done the the bleeding of the brakes. Uh, now, how I did it, I'm just gonna explain to you. So, um, because uh, I had to have, you really need to have somebody helping you pumping the brake pedal while you do this here. Um, so you're gonna give them instructions. Um, you're gonna have your, in this, this car uses a, an 11 mil wrench for the front bleeding uh, points and a nine mil uh, spanner. So an 11 and nine, nine mil for the back. You're gonna start at the back and move from the, so the, the further one on the back, which is in this case, the, the left, then the right. Then you go to the left of the car front and then right this will be the the last one here um so the way i did it is so just as an example starting on the back um, i've got these here yeah it's not the most professional thing in the world but it does the job you have a hose with one end goes all the way in the other end is short this bit connects here so you have to take the little covers off rubber covers take them off and you plug that in first you plug your your spanner you put your spanner in there sorry you don't plug it you put your spanner in there you put the um, hose in there so as we said you start on the back and you open the nipple the bleeding point you open it and then you ask your helper to start pumping so they will start pumping and fluid will start coming out and you will see how this starts going up a bit so i had my friend pump about 20 times because um, also just wanted to get rid of whatever fluid was left there from before or whatnot um, so it's a good way of obviously bleeding your whole system and changing the, the brake fluid so while he was pumping 20 times it can be a bit tiring and hard to do so but uh, while he was doing that I came here this has to be open by the way this has to be open while this happens and you want to make sure you keep this topping this up so this will start going down slowly you top it up make sure it's full then you ask your helper to stop pumping and hold the brake pedal all the way in so hold it there then you go to the back again and you close the nipple you close it and remove your hose and then you ask your helper to release the brake and to check. So to check, to pump again. When, when he pumps again, um, just make sure there's nothing coming out of there. It's not leaking. And, and also ask him if the pedal feels hard. It should start feeling hard straight away. Because um, just after you replace this the brake pedal is gonna feel very spongy it's just gonna go all the way in but as soon as you bleed one one uh wheel it it will feel start feeling hard and that's what you want you want it to start feeling really hard then you're gonna move to the the other side then to the front same procedure for all of them always making sure you have fluid here because if this runs out of fluid then uh, you're gonna start pumping air into the system and then you have to start again. And that's just pointless. 
and so so apart from that i hope that makes sense um if you have any questions go ahead and ask and the next point i need to do here really is just uh, delete the fault codes although as you can see once i started the car there was no faults on it anymore but the fault codes will be registered on the ecu so it's a good idea to delete them with your computer so to be honest i already deleted them everything is gone green on my computer so i don't need to i will show you in a minute okay so here's my computer and everything is now green so obviously when i um first plugged this in uh, just a few minutes ago the abs the tcm all those were red um just as before because the focals were stored in the system even though the even though there's no um, nothing showing anymore in here because uh, I think obviously the ECU detects that there's no issues with the car so it just clears the faults on your dash but um, yeah you still have to clear them from here um, so the last thing I would say is so now my brake is nice and hard so I'm quite you know happy with that confident I can engage gear car is stopping nicely and the last thing i would say is check pump the brake a few times and make sure there's no fluid coming out of any of this here just make sure everything is nice and dry if there is a small leak somewhere there you may need to tighten those a little bit more but remember don't damage that um, and then if there is a leak there and even you tighten a bit more still still leaking that means something has been damaged and that would be another time another video not from me in this case because obviously, <laughs> obviously these are okay but i'm sure there are videos out there where how to repair uh, brake lines and whatnot and also check the every brake check that they're not leaking as well and um, with that said I hope the video helps um, so don't forget to like and subscribe if the video has helped you and uh, we'll see you on the next video which actually will be I have a BMW 1 series which has a very similar problem with the ABS unit however it's not it's not the pressure sensor it's it's showing a speed sensor and um, I've replaced the speed sensor and it hasn't really fixed the issue and now I have I think I believe that the ABS unit is also faulty uh, but uh, we'll leave that for the next video so thank you for watching